And what we know is that for females 30 years old or younger, if they have intercourse with ejaculation around the time of ovulation, say on the day before and on the day of ovulation, and there could be other intercourse with ejaculation around that time as well, on average, that will result in a successful fertilization in pregnancy about 20% of the time on the first month of attempting, the first ovulation cycle. Now, if fertilization in pregnancy occurs, great. Right? There'll be at least a nine month lag until they decide whether or not they want to try and conceive again. However, most couples, even if the woman is 30 years old or younger, will not successfully conceive on that first attempt. And that's because the probability is not 100%, it's 20%. So 80% of the time, they simply will not conceive, which means that they hopefully will try again the very next month. And if they successfully conceive, great. And if they don't, then they ought to try again the next month, the next month, and so forth. Now, the typical advice that an OBGYN would give you is that for a woman 30 years or younger and leaving aside the age of the father, but still assuming that egg quality and sperm quality are sufficiently high to achieve fertilization, that the couple should, or if the woman's trying to have kids alone, the woman should attempt to conceive over the period of six months. Why? Well, if you think about it, if there's a 20% chance in the first month and it's unsuccessful, well then on the second month, there'll also be a 20% chance. On the third month, also a 20% chance. What I'm describing here is what obviously is independent probabilities. That is, if you were to flip a coin and the probability of getting heads is 50%, the probability of getting tails is 50%, of course, you don't expect that the previous flip had anything to do with the result that you'll get on the subsequent flip. That's what independent probabilities are. However, when it comes to fecundability, we're really talking about something which is called cumulative pregnancy rate, which is not really independent probabilities. Now, why would that be? Why would it be that if you did not successfully conceive in the first month of trying, that by simply trying again and again and again, the probability of conceiving would increase? Well, the reason for that is that this whole business of fertilization is not just about what's happening with the egg, it's also about what's happening with the sperm. So there are a number of different events related to the biology of the egg and the biology of the sperm, which you are now very familiar with from everything I've talked about up until now. And there are a bunch of chance events, for instance, that the sperm won't actually arrive at the egg in time or that the egg won't arrive at the sperm in time because of course it's a bi-directional migration of those two cell types or that for whatever reason, fertilization won't occur. So what we're really talking about when we talk about the cumulative pregnancy rate over time is the fact that there are multiple probabilities at work and yes, those are somewhat independent in the sense that the biology of the sperm doesn't really strictly depend on the biology of the egg, at least not until they meet and fertilize, but the likelihood of pregnancy depends on those independent probabilities, which makes this a cumulative pregnancy rate. Now, if any of that is confusing, what it basically means is that for the egg and the sperm to meet and to fertilize, a number of different events that carry some intentionality, right? The sperm swims towards the egg and so forth, the egg, we doesn't have a, a personality in there, at least not yet, but it uh, quote unquote wants to be fertilized, right? It, it is in principle receptive to fertilization. Well, in order for that to happen, there are going to be some events related to chance that could limit the ability for that to happen. And there'll be other events dictated by the biology of those two cell types that are driving that event to happen, that are biasing the event to yes happen. And so what we're talking about when we talk about cumulative pregnancy rate is how much of the biology of the woman is skewed towards fertilization to be likely to occur, okay? So to make this very simple, all we need to know is that for women 30 years old or younger, because the probability of getting pregnant on any one attempt to conceive is 20%, well then, if that doesn't occur the first time, then she should simply repeat that at least five and probably six times before deciding to go to an OBGYN and conclude that there's something going on either with the egg or of course it could be with the sperm, okay? Because 20 times five is 100, so we're talking about cumulative percent. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, and the six month there would take you to 120%, um, which is a, a different thing altogether. But in general, that's why OBGYNs will tell their female patients, look, if you're setting out to conceive, try for about five or six months. And if you're not successful, come back and see me. Now for women who are age 30 
one to 33, the probability of conceiving in that first month drops to about 18%. So women in that age range and their partners should certainly try and conceive naturally over a period of six or seven months in order to get to that 100% cumulative probability. And then for women who are aged 34 to 37, the probability of conceiving in that first month of, a t of trying and certainly every month thereafter is about 11%. So when the age of the woman starts extending out to about 34 or 35 years old, then the typical advice of the OBGYN is going to be to attempt to conceive over a period of about nine months to a year before deciding to take some sort of medical intervention. And then of course, as the age of the woman increases, so too does the quality of the eggs go down. Now that's not true for every woman. There are many women who in their late thirties and forties and even early fifties have successfully conceived healthy children. Although the probability of that, the likelihood of it drops substantially. So for instance, for women who are age 38 to 39, the probability of a successful conception by natural conception intercourse with ejaculation is going to be about 5%. Right, so it's really dropped to a quarter of what it was when that woman was 30. Again, these are averages only. What does that mean? Well, it means that if you are age 38 or older, chances are that you should probably go to your OBGYN right at the outset of your desire to conceive and ask what you can do to improve egg quality. Otherwise, if you were to extend the math out, right, we know that if you're age 30 or younger, 20% chance in any one given month, that means about four to six months of trying. Well, you can simply multiply that times four or five for someone in their late 30s or early 40s. And so what you're really talking about is several years of trying, and of course what's happening during those several years, the woman is getting older, and as a consequence, the quality of the eggs is declining even further. So if you are you know, 35, 36 years old, it might not be entirely unreasonable to talk to your OBGYN right at the outset of desiring to conceive, but you could also just take the approach of trying to conceive naturally for about a year or a year and a half before deciding to do that. Keeping in mind that all the while you can't stop time, so biological time and aging is going to occur in the backdrop. But hopefully this description of cumulative uh, pregnancy rate makes sense. Again, the idea is that while it's true that every single month there's an independent chance of the woman getting pregnant, and that chance is dropping from about 20% at age 30 over time to about really one to 3% for women 40 or older. There's also this notion of cumulative probability, which involves multiple biological events in both the egg and the sperm that have to converge in time and space in order for successful fertilization to occur.